So first I want to introduce Casper Stockham. Now I've gotten to know Casper through the Colorado uh, American Conservatives of Color. Uh, Derek Wilburn, I don't know if you know him. Uh, he's done very well in getting the message out. And Casper is in a district that's very heavily Democrat. I think that every statewide candidate ought to come down to his district and help him because that's going to help us win statewide elections because that's really taking the stronghold of the Democrats. And so please help me welcome probably David and Goliath. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Joe, from your lips to God's ears on that. Um, I haven't had any candidates rushing to Denver to help me, but I, when they show up, I would definitely welcome their, their attention. Um, so I see a lot of new faces in here. I don't know if you know my story, and I think it's important for me to share some of it with you to help you understand why I believe that I am going to beat the get this time. All right? So I'm running against Diana the get in CD1. My name is Casper Stockham. I grew up in Connecticut, in Stratford, Connecticut, and I hung out in Bridgeport, so I got in trouble. Right? And by the time I was 17, I'm just being totally straight up with you, by the time I was 17, I hated all things Republican and most things white. Just the way it was, right? I grew up in a Democrat household. Went into the military, and I was in an officer training program that allowed for minorities to be in this program but have low grades. Now, doesn't make any sense to us, but it made a lot of sense to them at the time. Ronald Reagan got elected, and one of the first things his administration did was cut that program. Typical Republican, cutting stuff. <laughs> and I was mad. I don't even know why I was mad. I was mad in class, and I was mad at Republicans. And then something snapped in my mind that said, yeah, but you're in class. I know, but those Republicans are always cut. Yeah, but you're in class. See, they, they didn't take me out of class. All they did was remove the safety net. Right. So now I had to keep getting good grades like everybody else. <laughs> I said, well, yeah, but, but those were but, but. I couldn't argue with myself. So I lost that battle. I became very conservative, real conservative. I was so conservative, I couldn't vote for anybody. <laughs> I couldn't vote for Dole. I couldn't vote for um, Bush. None of them. Couldn't vote for none of them. None of them were conservative enough for me. So 2012, I'm watching the chaos ensue with Romney and all the other stuff. Couldn't vote for Romney either. And I go to a meeting, a chance meeting with Herman Cain. He came into town. There was about 150 of us in the room. It's probably maybe three black, Hispanic type people, and that included Herman Cain. <laughs> and he was telling us, look guys, look, I didn't win, I'm not the nominee, but we have to vote. Every election is important. I said, yeah, I heard that like 20,000 times. Every election, oh my God, this is the election. If we don't win this, it's over, right? And I'm saying to myself, I am not voting for Romney, because he's not conservative. You guys know that, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. I'm just... Make sure you the right around. <laughs> so, and then, because it's Herman Cain, he's kind of like a celebrity, so I want to go take a picture with Herman Cain. So I go up and take a picture, and I'm sorry, I'm gonna use your hand, Jack, for a second. And I shake his hand, and normally you shake your hand, and that's it, right? I shake Herman Cain's hand, he, he pulls me in. I said, uh oh, it's <laughs> not good, not good at all. He said, young man, we all have to vote. How did he know I was not going to vote for him? <laughs> Who told this man this? So I said, okay. Herman Cain told me I have to vote, so I'm going to vote. I vote for Romney. Y'all know what happened. 10.30 our time, it was over. It wasn't even close. And I'm looking at the TV saying, what in the world? I voted. How could Romney lose? I voted, right? I don't vote for anybody. So those things, did they make you bitter or they make you better? And I decided I was going to double down. I'm mad now. I'm going to get involved with politics. I'm going to do something. I'm going to do anything. And you know, Jack, I looked around for people doing stuff, stuff, and there's a whole bunch of people doing absolutely nothing. 
they meet, they eat, they complain, and then they go home. And the next month, they meet, they eat, they complain, then they go home. I'm saying, guys, we gotta, we gotta, I don't know, something. So I looked around on the internet and I found Derek Wolper, American Conservatives of Color. I said, wow, he's doing stuff. He's in the community, he's, you know, he's active. So I go down and meet Derek. I took my family down to, to Colorado Springs because I live in Denver. I go down there and said, Derek, I, I live in Denver. I love your videos, I love your message. Sign me up, man, I wanna, wanna get busy. He said, wait a minute, you live in Denver? I said, yes. He said, we need somebody to run the Denver chapter. I said, whoa, whoa, <laughs> slow down. I'm not interested in running stuff. I would wanna hand out some flyers or make a phone call or something. You know, I don't wanna run anything. He said, no, no, we need somebody to run the Denver chapter. Long story short, I wind up becoming the president of the Denver chapter, and then Derek became the, the vice chair of the Republican Party, so then I had to become the president of the entire organization. <laughs> and then I, um, in 2016, decided to run against the gay. So I, made, I, I got 28% of the vote, which is not bad, but it's not good, because I lost, right? But I only had $50,000. That changes a little bit, right? So if I had more money, I would have gotten better. I believe this time, with $300,000, she'll be looking for a new job. And I'm pretty confident of that, because of what we did last time. And since then, I've been in the community working, doing workshops, teaching the youth in the, in the inner city. We've got a lot of programs going on right now that we're gonna expand as I'm running, but also as a, um, as a congressperson. We've got a lot more exposure in the community, got a lot more community leaders who are excited about my race. So I believe she's got a, she's got a fight on her hands this time. Right, so I have a three, two, one plan. So I have a three, two, one plan. 300,000 in um, campaign donations. We need to touch 200,000 voters in that district. There's roughly 400 and something thousand voters. We need to touch at least half of those voters. And I need an army of 100 people. If I have an army of 100 people going into Denver, we win. We win, right? So that's all we need. I know you guys can help me with like 200 of that, 300 <laughs> other than that. Anyway, so um, when Greg told me that John was coming into town, I said, man, I've got to be a part of that. I really want to be a part of that. So uh, the rest of my time, I want to spend talking to you about Greg. I met Greg probably six, seven, eight, eight months ago. July 4th. July, July 4th. <laughs> That's right, because we were at the Capitol. We are at the Capitol. We were at the Capitol. Uh, it was a Trump rally. This is one of those rallies. Everybody has a rally. We're going to rally for Trump. So we rally for Trump. Yay, Trump. And then we go home. We don't do anything. We don't stay in the community. To do. Oh, it drives me crazy. Anyway, so I meet Greg, and I said, man, um, I've got some ideas about how you can do well in Denver and Boulder counties. If we win, just like, just like Joe said, we're, just Joe. Just like Joe said, if we win or do well in Denver and Boulder counties, we win the state. We win the race. Greg wins the race. Plain and simple. But there's only two or three candidates that even understand that. Greg is one of them. He understands it big time. So I told him about a book, Conservative Heart. He, he is now conservative. He's the book. He absorbed it. He became the book. He understands how we can win in Denver. If we do well in Denver, Boulder counties, and now, unfortunately, El Paso County, right? Mm -hmm. Starting to, mm -hmm. yep. right? Yeah. If we do well in those counties, we win. The other candidates do not understand that. I've talked to them. They look at me like I'm, I'm speaking a foreign language. This is, this, is, this is not rocket science, folks. Denver, uh, I mean, um, Colorado is very bluish, purplish, bluish-ish, right? So any candidate that we put up there has to be relatable to the other side, to the unaffiliates, to the millennials, to the Hispanics, to the blacks, to everybody. Well, that's great. There's no other candidate that has that appeal. The only thing he doesn't have is the big money like the Walker State. That's it. He's got more experience, executive experience. He was mayor of Parker when it was good. 
<laughs> you know, he's got everything he needs except for our support, our money, and our help. With that, he wins. So I'm done with my time. I think we're going to come back later for questions. I'm just so excited to be here to support Greg, to meet John, and to meet all of you. I hope you understand that even though you may not live in Denver County, or you may not live in the Denver area, it's nice and warm and fuzzy out here. I get it. But if we don't win or do well in those counties, in those areas, we all lose. We all lose. So anyway, thank you for your time.